Welcome to My Two Cents with Keith Beggs from Steadfast Wealth Strategies. In this podcast, we show high-level executives and business owners why comprehensive financial planning and executive bonus structures don't have to be too good to be true. Keith draws on his experience in realistic financial planning, and expert guests share his two cents about academically-based financial planning that you have to hear to believe. Now, on to the show. Welcome to another episode of the My Two Cents Podcast. My name is Keith Beggs, the CEO and founder of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. This is the third of our three-part series uh, with John McDonough, excuse me, of Cool Springs Financial, uh, their senior managing director. Um, today, we're going to talk about estate planning. So the first time we kind of did a, a, an intro into what is premium financing. If you weren't able to listen to the second one, we really talked about how business owners can use this uh, to keep their powder dry or keep their capital in hand. Um, take care of their key employees, protect their business, but not have to invest so much of their cash flow in doing that and allowing them to keep doing what they do best. Today, we're going to talk about more personal use and estate planning. Um, that kind of does tie into what we tail end off of or ended up the last one with um, or some family were privately family owned businesses. Um, so, hey, John, how are you doing this morning? Hey, Keith. Glad to be back. So, John, let's kind of pick up where we talked and I'll kind of reset the scenario in case some people didn't listen to the, to the previous podcast. And there are a lot of family-owned businesses out there. There maybe one child is going to take over the business um, and the other kids are going to be left out. Not on purpose, it's just not their passion, right? They're going to go somewhere else. Uh, or maybe there's a family-owned business um, that without the, the head individual, there's, there's not a lot of value in that practice. So there's no really business to sell at the end. And how do we leverage our success with this business now to make sure that we have some type of retirement plan and income later on? So let's kind of go through that. We got a business owner. He's got three kids. Right. One kid is heavily involved in the business. The other two aren't right. Comes to cool spring. He's like, look, I got to figure something out. Child a right is going to take over the business, but child B and C are going to be pretty unhappy that they don't get near as much in their, in their trust or will or whatever you want to call it as child a, now I got a problem on my hands. Yeah. And we've seen this a lot and really we get brought in at the last minute when the estate planning attorney is like, listen, we got a problem here. Like it's creating, it's an issue that most families don't talk about. It's kind of underneath the surface until the conversation gets brought up to the table. And then the two or three or one or however many children aren't in the business, they're like, what about me? Where, where's, where's my fair value? Like, I don't want you to die, but you're going to give my brother, my sister ownership of the company, just take it over. And it's a 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, whatever the million dollar valuation of, of the company how do we get that in exchange? And ultimately it comes down to really the best way to create that equal value of exchange is through life insurance. And if you think Keith business owners don't like the idea of paying premiums for life insurance, wealthy people hate the idea of annual recurring payments for life insurance that they're never going to see the benefit from, which right. is one of the reasons the premium finance industry industry was created was to take advantage of the arbitrage between the low cost of borrowing money, relatively low cost of borrowing money versus the death benefit and the cash value accumulation inside of these plans. And so from an estate planning standpoint, what the business owner is allowed to do in this particular example is, yes, you can pass on the value of the business to the child that's in, in the business, working in the business, going to keep running the business. But the other children that are out of the business, you simply, and it is simply, buy a life insurance valuation on your life that gives equal distribution to the other remaining children, and you don't have to write a premium check for it. Let the bank fund it. And the collateral that may or may not be needed for that can be used from the business that's not going to be sold anyway. And it's just a perfect, seamless, simple solution to a very complex, emotionally charged problem that many families face. Right. I, I think um, it's fair to say most of the people that we talk to know they need life insurance. It's the having to pay for it, right? Especially when you're looking at someone that's going to have to buy a 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar life insurance policy. I, I don't know too many times at all where we sit across from someone and they said, no, I don't need the insurance, right? It's I don't really want to pay for the well, insurance. The, the, right? the, that's the conversation. Yeah, that's exactly right. The statement of I don't need the insurance, and they're wealthy, so technically they don't. But who really, 
who really, no business owner that is a capitalist in my mind, no business owner that I've ever sat with is really excited about giving the federal government 45% of the value of the business that they work their life to build, right? right? So they don't need the insurance. They just don't want to give that value to the, to the IRS. But what they prefer even less is to write the premium check, like a $50,000 a year, $100,000 a year premium check. They'd rather get a stick in the eye than do right. that, right? And so the, they just release to the IRS. And so this solution that we provide allows them to have their cake and eat it too, right? Yes, you can still provide the value to your children. And no, you do not have to write the premium checks for it. The banks will write those checks. Right. And then the other issue you'll see a lot of times is let's say I give the business to, to, to the child A, um, but my plan all along when I was building this business was to sell it. And then I was going to live off of that in retirement, right? I built this business that's now worth $10 million, 15, like you said, 20. But if I give it to, to my, my child, I don't want to make them then go take out a 10, 15, $20 million loan against the business day one to, pay, to buy me out. That puts them in a very negative cash flow position, right? We've already talked about how important cash flow is in a business. So talk about how we can do this now or we'll use this. The child can get the business, but then you could still get an income or, or an opportunity to get money in retirement that you're, that you're taking care of. Yeah. And this one takes a little bit more forethought or foresight to see this coming down the road. It's very hard to plan for this one 12 months or 24 months out from retirement. But when we have a couple years and we can see them down the road that this transition needs to take place and this is what the financial picture is going to look like, we can put this design in place where in our previous podcast, we talked about that tax-free distribution going to the employee. Now we can set it up where that tax-free distribution goes to the business owner, right, down the road, depending on when that starts. And then we can potentially have the business bridge that gap with income, or we can get a loan from the bank and bridge that gap with income from a loan from the bank and then use the life insurance to pay back the loan that was taken to help them easily guide into retirement as opposed to you know, not being able to sell the business or not being able to have any tax-free income. The, the challenge business owners have, Keith, and you and I know this very well, is their retirement plan by and large is their business. Right. 100%. And, and they don't put enough thought and planning into how they're going to turn their business into retirement income. And that's where we help solve that problem. Right. So, and I know there's a little overlap here, but when you're talking family owned businesses, the business and the, and the family estate are a lot of times intertwined, right? It, you, you, you can't really separate them. You can't. And, and so when we talk to business owners, it's not uncommon for those listeners that heard the previous podcast, but it's not uncommon for our business owners to also be employed by the company. They receive an income by the company. And one could argue they are the most key employee to their own company. Agreed? So right. they have one strategy for executive bonus on themselves, a key person strategy on themselves, a buy sell strategy on themselves, as well as a net worth and estate strategy on themselves. They might have four different designs on one single life. So, okay, let's talk specifically about some estate designs. I'll know the, the, a lot of the business owner designs we talked about even a little bit today, we're talking about building up an opportunity to get a pension style. It's not, it's not a pension, but a pension style where lifetime tax deferred or, or tax exempt distribution out, out of the policy. But there's also sometimes where we're not really needing the income, right? Like you mentioned earlier, we might have a big state tax issue, right? We have a big a, a tax issue on the line where, where something other issues, we just need the life insurance component of it for the estate plan specifically. Um, and the Cool Springs do that as well, correct? Yeah, and actually that's how we actually got started. So our origination decades ago was on the death benefit only design, working with ultra high net worth individuals, strictly finding a way to provide for estate tax coverage using life insurance without having to write a premium check for us. So that's actually how we started. The, the business application, the executive bonus key man design really came as a, as a, as a byproduct of our initial design. Okay. So for, is the process the same then there? We, you know, you do a, an initial evaluation of the business, you figure out how much insurance you need, right? And then yeah. it still comes down to collateral? Yeah, we're problem solvers. So yes, the, the, the strategy or the process is the same. We have to figure out what 
risk we're trying to ensure first, right? Mm -hmm. So from, a, from an estate planning perspective, we're trying to see what's your estate tax liability? What's your liquidity need? Because for those of you listening that don't know this, when a wealthy individual passes away and they pass away with more money than the federal government thinks that they should have, they have nine months from the date of death that they have to pay the estate taxes in cash to the IRS nine months from the date of death on the death certificate. And so that's when you've heard of estate sales, fire sales, liquidity sales, where they're trying to liquidate the estate to create the cash to pay the IRS. And we wanna prevent that from happening. It's just useless for someone to have to do that when you can use premium financed insurance as a way to create that liquidity without having to use your cash flow, your assets to pay for that, right? So, but we have to learn what that number is. What's that risk we're trying to ensure? No different than we would do that for a business owner on business valuation or executive bonus, deferred comp, that type of thing. Gotcha. And then, you know, the, the number one concern in all these designs, John, um, usually comes down to, to collateral, right? Do we have the ability to collateralize the interest, right? Right now, I think the interest is two to three, maybe a little over three, depending on who you are. But do I have that ability to, to collateralize that interest? Um, real quick, can you touch on some of the different options for collateral that a that an individual will have? I know there's multiple options. It's not always just cash. I know cash is always a great op option, but there are other options that they can use that will allow them to do this and continue to function normally um, and, and build this, this benefit in the back. Yeah, you bet. So to understand the collateral, let's take one step back and understand the structure of the design. So a bank is lending the premiums to an insurance company on your behalf. So the very first position of collateral that the bank lender is gonna take is the life insurance policy itself. And the life insurance policy is gonna generate some value in the cash value or the account value based on how much interest it earns or doesn't earn in a particular year. And we, we use policies that have a guaranteed floor of 0%. And the banks love that because they can calculate in advance what their guarantee needs to be for the next 12 months, right? But where there's a gap between the growth of the cash value and the cost of borrowing the premiums, the bank wants to know that they're gonna be made whole for the next 12 months looking forward. That's that gap collateral or that additional collateral keep that you're mentioning. And what clients, what the banks would love to see, as you mentioned, is cash or cash equivalents. Where clients typically step in is they use collateral on existing equity accounts, right? They might have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, not in IRAs or 401ks, but non-retirement, non-qualified accounts that they can just get a letter by their brokerage company that says, yes, there's this X amount of value and we'll use it to pledge the gap collateral for the next 12 months. Or business owners can get a letter of credit from their bank that they do their business banking with based on receivables, inventory, things like that, assets that they may have to cover that gap collateral for the next 12 months. And it's recalibrated every 12 months because the bank is gonna loan another premium and the cash value will have either earned some interest or not have earned some interest relative to the cost of borrowing. So every 12 months, we do a recalibration of how much collateral is needed. But at some point, Keith, the cash value will grow greater than all of the loans that the bank has provided, at that point, there's no additional gap collateral needed to be provided by the client. And, and what about real estate, John? What if I have a ranch that's free and clear? Maybe I have an in income producing, maybe I own a bunch of duplexes, right? Or a bunch of rental homes for different things like that. Any option to use any of those type of investments? Yeah, yeah. Use? It's very similar to the business. Owner. I'm glad you brought that up because we've actually dealt with this before. You and I have with, um, with somebody. And it's, we want those assets to stay invested. Don't sell them just to try to cover this. We can simply get a letter of credit against those assets where they stay appreciating value. And we just have a piece of paper from a bank that says, if it would ever be needed, we're good for this amount of collateral for the next 12 months. So I can have a ranch that I'm continually using, right? And I'll have, I just have a letter of credit against it. that says if I quit the life insurance policy or I back out of the life insurance policy, right, that I'm good for whatever my collateral is. And my ranch is just ho holding that collateral value for me. And I'm able to use it 100% like I was before, similar to like a mortgage on a home almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's just a standby letter of credit. So by the way, nobody walks away from these insurance designs because there's no reason to walk away. 
Right. We, we haven't had that happen with our designs at Cool Springs. People don't walk away. They don't want to walk away, right? But in that unicorn scenario that you just mentioned, the bank isn't going to foreclose on the land. They're going to say, okay, you just need to make up X amount of value. Where are you going to make that up from? Right. So, I mean, I know we, we've talked to people that have a lot of duplexes or rental homes. They can use those type of, uh, of investments or, or real estate pieces. They're still collecting the income off of it. They're still getting the value of that business. Now it's also generating a whole other asset uh, behind the scenes for them. And it's working twice as hard for them, right? We want, uh, we want our assets to work extremely hard for us. This is a great way to get um, some real estate that some people call lazy assets um, to, to add additional value to you, your business, or your estate. So um, just something out but there to think about. What, what do wealthy people do? What, are, what have the, the titans in industry proven to us over the history of our country? And that is you let your money work for you and you borrow other people's money for as low as you can possibly borrow from at the rates and terms you want to set up. And you do that as much as you can, as long as you can, because it creates wealth in that process. And that's really what we're doing here. So I really applaud you for getting this in front of your listeners. This is a good concept. Obviously, yeah. I'm biased, but it's a very good concept. Well, John, I appreciate uh, you uh, being around to help explain this and, and be involved in this. Again, uh, we have a great partnership with Cool Springs Financial. Uh, we work directly with John. He's right here in Houston. Um, if you have any questions about this, if you want to see what a design looks like for you, if you want to see if you qualify for a design, if this fits your business, if this fits your estate, um, if any of the problems or issues you've heard us talk about in these last three podcasts are something that you're dealing with or concerned about down the future, don't wait. Let's, let's talk about this. Let's take advantage of the, of the times we're in with where interest rates are and, and, and get you guys set up. Um, so, John, thank you for being a part of this. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to get a lot of great value out of this. And, again, this is John McDonough. He's the Senior Managing Director for Cool Springs Financial uh, and a great friend of mine and an average golfer. But um, and <laughs> I had to throw that in on the third one. I waited for the third one to throw that in. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to give him another chance to talk after saying that. So my name is Keith Meggs. I'm with Steadfast uh, Wealth Strategies. Uh, this is my My Two Cents podcast. We thank you guys for being a part of this. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Give me a call at 832-506-9034. Or you can email me at Keith at steadfastws.com. You guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. And again, that's John McDonough of Cool Springs Financial and Keith Beggs of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. Subscribe to Keith's podcast, My Two Cents, to be alerted to new episodes and make sure to share with friends and colleagues. Thank you for listening to My Two Cents with Keith Beggs. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. All securities discussed are offered and provided through Steadfast Financial Planning, LLC. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Steadfast Wealth Strategies. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor and or qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. This podcast is not intended to provide specific investment, financial planning, tax, or legal advice. It is intended for educational purposes only. Please consult your tax advisor, financial advisor, or legal professional for specific advice on your specific situation.